Blood Beat, 1983, directed by Fabrice Angezafferatos, starring Helen Benton, Terry Brown, and Claudia Payton. A family gets together for the holidays in rural Wisconsin, where they gradually come under attack by a ghost samurai. I fell victim to a classic tactic utilized by straight-to-video releases. Intriguing premise, promising trailer, deceptive box art. Uh, as established in my review for Arcade, you have to lower your expectations when watching a video release. Like many straight-to-video offerings from the 80s and 90s, what was presented on the box cover was not what was in the film. It's a shame, really. A cyborg ninja ghost would have been awesome, and I did get my hopes up. So what went wrong? A few things. Unfortunately, too many plates were spun, and not enough attention was given to what could have been an awesome premise. It tries being a slasher film, a haunting film, a film involving psychic powers, and there's hints of a backstory that aren't ultimately explored. The lack of focus or commitment to any of these ideas makes the film feel half-baked and underdeveloped, and even drawn out amidst a runtime that's actually under the standard 90 minutes. There's nearly incessant classical music that almost drowns the dialogue out at times, almost making it feel like an experimental film. The synth score, however, also composed by the director, is great, offering that eerie atmosphere that we all know and love about 80s horror. I'm honestly surprised he didn't score more films. This was very much a passion project for Zafiratos, not only writing, directing, and scoring the film, but also editing and even operating the camera. It takes 39 minutes for our first on-screen killing to occur, the film being fairly light on the deaths and not particularly memorable or creative with them. Movie logic is so strange. The neighbor is killed right in front of the family, so what do the two main characters do? Bang with the body still probably outside. The film doesn't really allow itself to go too over the top either, which would have helped make it more entertaining at least. The influence of Italian horror is extremely noticeable as well, as the film attempts to tell things visually instead of through expository dialogue. Unfortunately, this causes parts of the story to be lost. Research revealed that the director admitted to being under the influence of drugs while making this film, the title itself being a random reference to the accelerated heartbeat experienced while high. This makes the film's jumbled existence make a lot more sense. Verdict? Thumbs down. I now understand why this film has remained fairly obscure when discussing Christmas horror films. It just isn't that entertaining or memorable. That concludes this week's review. If there's any obscure sci-fi or horror film you'd like to suggest, feel free to leave a comment below. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, have a wonderful new year, I'll see you in 2022 with a new thrilling low-budget adventure.